I don't want to mislead anyone. This video is not going to answer the question of what is Fujifilm's best lens for wildlife photography, but instead I'm going to talk about how I plan to test all the lenses to find out the answer to that question. If, down in the comments below, you could give me your thoughts, your ideas, your criticisms on any of my testing process, I would love to hear from you, because in a couple of weeks we're going to start finding out what is the best lens from Fujifilm for wildlife photography. Okay, so let's start things off with some of the easier things to check, to measure, to consider when reviewing a lens for wildlife photography. So the first factor, and maybe the most obvious, is the amount of zoom a lens has. See, the further away you can be from an animal, the less likely you are to disturb it, the more likely you are to get the shot. Zoom is physically written on the lens, it's physically a part of it, very easy to measure and consider when checking out a lens. Next thing I'll be considering is the aperture of the lens. See, aperture is very important for creating separation from your background. It also allows you to have a higher shutter speed and a lower ISO, created in higher quality, sharper frozen motion. Aperture is a huge factor, but once again, very easy to consider. But how important is aperture? How bright of an aperture do you need to capture certain content? I'm going to work that out, but once again, physically written on it, and a part of the lens, very easy to consider. Moving along to image stabilizer, which this is actually a little bit more of a trickier thing to measure. See, if you're shooting fast moving content, then your shutter speed is going to be so high to freeze the motion of that subject, the image stabilizer isn't actually that important. But if you are doing more, say, lower light, long lens, portrait style of wildlife photography, then image stabilizer can be huge. However, where I'm struggling with this is a way to measure how effective an image stabilizer is. So I have an idea. I can just shoot handheld and keep dropping the shutter speed lower and lower until I feel the shutter speed, the image stabilizer, isn't creating tack sharp enough images. But this is very personal. It is how it affects me. It might not be how it affects you. So if you have a better idea of how to measure how effective an image stabilizer is, I'd love to hear from you. Just about all the lenses I'll be considering are weather sealed, but not all of them. But where weather sealing is really important is all the best shots happen around the worst weather. And see, if you get a lens, if you have a lens like this, which is like a tube design, and you have moisture or dust land on that part of the lens and then you close it up, it will suck that grit, that moisture into your lens and very quickly ruin your lens. And because I love to capture atmosphere, I love that dust, I love that moisture, I love that fog, where the ceiling is very important. However, once again, it's physically part of the lens, very easy to measure. How important is it? We'll see as I go. Moving along to weight. See, weight might not seem like a biggie, and I'd probably actually put it quite low on the list of importance. For some people, say, if you were driving around all day shooting from a vehicle, say on safari, then weight isn't too big. If you were sitting all day in a hide, then once again, you don't have to carry it too much. Weight will have less of effect. But if you're hiking, if you're walking, if you're just not as steady as you'd like to be, weight has a huge factor. So this, once again, very easy to consider, very easy to measure. How important it is to the overall effectiveness of a lens, well, we'll find that out as well. But I actually think one of the hardest, easiest factors to measure is price. So I can work out an average price simply by just giving it a good Google search and finding out an average result. However, what's tricky about price is above anything else, I feel it is very subjective. So if I told you a lens is going to cost you $6,000, some of you might not bat an eyelid at all. Go, that, that's fine for the, say, the 200mm f2, sounds great. But others of you just spat out your coffee, as I said, a $6,000 for a lens. So very, very subjective. So I might keep price separate from an overall, overall algorithm. If I come up with an overall, 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 overall algorithm for reviewing wildlife lenses, or I might consider it a part of it. We'll see. Price above anything else, so very subjective. So aside from image stabilizer, those are all really easy to find out and consider when reviewing the lens for wildlife photography. What gets far trickier is measuring sharpness and focus speed. See, after reviewing all the wide angle lenses, I came up with a far more accurate way of measuring lens sharpness. So what I do is I have this giant semen star here. And if I take photographs of it and then measure how much of that star can be resolved, it will give me a pretty indication of the best settings for any particular lens. There are some flaws to this test, or uh, variables I need to account for. Light, camera shake, focusing, raw, exposure, ISO, white balance, and some human error. There is one other big factor we're gonna talk about in a moment as well. 
So if I can rule out all of those, and like I said, measure the percentage of that star that can be resolved, this will give me a pretty indication of a comparable sharpness score for each lens. However, there is one human error factor that is, that is hard to account for. So when looking closely at the results of those shots, when a star, when the image starts to lose detail and completely loses detail, there's a little bit of a gray area of, of exactly how much of that star is resolved. I managed to measure that down to 1.5%. So as far as sharpness goes, I can be accurate to 1.5%, which is good enough for me. But the biggest variable factor that is hard to account for is distance. See, the more I zoom, the further away I have to be from the star. I can account for this a little bit by trying to compose that star to take up the exact same amount of the sensor, the exact same amount of the shot in every single one. So say at the 400mm lens, at 400mm, I'd have to be at maybe 20 metres away, where the, say at 100 mils, I'd only have to maybe be 10 metres away. The different distances will affect sharpness a bit. I feel like I kind of glossed over one important factor of why distance is such a variable when doing the sharpness score. See, the megapixels, the sensor size, the sensor quality will affect this scores as well. So for example, if I'm really far away and that star is really small in the frame, then just the sensor quality is going to make it resolve less information, where if I zoom in really close to it, that star will be far bigger and resolve far more detail just based on the size it takes up in the sensor. So if I make the star the exact same shot, no matter what zoom range I am at, or make the star the exact same size, then sensor will have far less of an impact on how sharp, how much information, how much detail that lens can resolve. So as an example, this lens, the 100-400, is it best at 400mm for the extra zoom, or if I come back a little bit to 390mm, do I get a huge increase in sharpness? I don't know the answer to that yet, but I'm excited to do the test and I'm excited to share the information with you guys. The final test I've come up with is for focus speed. See, focus speed is really important for wildlife photography, and for this test, if I plug in an external recorder into my camera so I can record focusing while in photo mode, not in video mode, and then I set, once again, that star up, and if I focus on infinity, and then auto-focus back to the star, and then if I focus on the minimum focus distance and auto-focus to that star, and I do that 10 times each, this will give me a score, an average score, of how quickly a lens can focus. However, once again, there's some variables to this. So this scoring, will, I can work out for like say 400, 300, 200, 100 millimeters, but different zoom ranges and different apertures will give me different scores. So the biggest flaw of this test is the wider and the darker the aperture of the lens, so if I shoot say 10 millimeters at f8, this will focus far quicker than say 200 millimeters at f2. So poorer lenses, poorer wildlife photography lenses will get better results in this. So a way to get around this to make it more comparable is if I shoot every lens at 200 millimeters at f8, I can have a consistent amount to compare for every single lens of how quickly a lens can focus. With some exceptions, say if I have a lens that can't go to 200 millimeters, like for example the 50 to 140, I'm just going to have to make a note of this. But most of the lenses we will be considering will be able to focus at, or be zoomed to 200 millimeters and can achieve f8. So that can give me the comparative one, but then I can still release focus speed scores for say 400 millimeters at f5.6 or 200 millimeters at f2. Lots of information to share. I'm excited to find that out. However. A big factor to consider amongst all this reviewing process is the 1.4 and the 2 times converters. How will they affect sharpness? I know how they affect zoom. How will it affect focus speeds? Before I do any other tests, I need to work out what kind of effect the 1.4 and the 2 times converters have on lenses. For example, the 50 to 140 in most cases, I don't think is going to be enough zoom for an effective wildlife photography lens. But when you factor in those converters, does it suddenly lift it up again? What's better, the 100 to 400 or the 50 to 140 with a two times or 1.4 times converter? Once again, I don't know, but I'm excited to test and I'm excited to share the answers with you guys. As I said at the start of the video though, if you have any criticisms or any ideas on this testing process, especially when it comes to the image stabilizer and how effective is it, please let me know down in the comments below. If some of these tests just have too many human variables that I haven't considered to work out an accurate result, once again, please feel free to rip into me in the kindest way possible and I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you could like, share and subscribe, it would mean the world to me guys. I'm not going to start sharing these reviews for a couple of weeks yet as I need to really refine this process, but I'd love your thoughts, I love your time, I really appreciate you watching and helping out with the channel and until next time guys i'll catch you next time